Hidden deep beneath the bustling streets of Paris lies a world few dare to venture into. A world of bones, darkness, winding tunnels, and endless corridors. This subterranean labyrinth is home to the infamous Paris catacombs, stretching for miles beneath the city. A massive maze of death lined with the remains of six million souls. While the tunnels as a whole are about 155 to 186 miles long, the actual catacombs are only one mile long and located 65 feet underground. Paris catacombs are a place of both fascination and dread, where fear and legend, inspiration and exploration intersect. Walking past the entrance to the Paris catacombs, you would never guess what lurked beneath. Despite their eerie reputation, the catacombs still attract thousands of visitors each year many of whom are willing to wait in line for hours to explore the Macro Bay burial site. Descend into the darkness of the Paris catacombs, if you dare. The ominous journey commences with a corkscrew stairway that spirals down 20 meters underground, leaving you with no choice but to delve deeper into the abyss. After looking around a well-lit room filled with information and displays, the hush begins. A pseudo-grand entrance leads you into the catacombs with these words. Stop. This is the empire of death. Know that you'll be walking through lengthy tunnels of mild earth for quite a while before reaching the actual ossuary, so claustrophobes should abstain, as should those who have difficulty breathing. The doorway itself is quite small. The steps that wind down are even smaller and extremely narrow. Descending the spiral stairs, you briefly lose track of where you are until the temperature drops and an underground dampness chills your skin. As you advance, any noise will become more muted and muffled, enveloping you in the silence of the earth beneath. The path forward is relatively well marked, but don't wander off because there is no phone signal down here. And if you get lost, as you enter the catacombs, the first thing that strikes you is the smell. The sunless air spans an estimated 125 miles of interlacing tunnels and rooms. Extending from the Tower of Montparnasse to the Port de Orleans and emanating an overpowering odor of mildew and stagnant water. At the base of the stairwell is a short tunnel with flickering lamps as your only source of light. The air cools as you walk down the passageway. Finally, you reach the true entrance to the catacombs, a massive maze of bones right below the city of Paris. The entrance of the site at Dempfert Rochereau in the south of Paris features a panel warning visitors in three languages. That the experience is likely to upset 
especially sensitive people and children. This caution is hardly surprising, given that the journey involves half a mile walk among the bones of long dead Parisians. Not discouraging, but not quite welcoming either. They're not called the haunted catacombs of Paris for nothing. Haunted places await with the catacombs. Among the eerie stacks of bones, like galleries adorned with haunting pictures and quotes that prompt contemplation of one's own mortality. One such quote reads, Think in the morning that you might not survive into the evening, and in the evening that you might not survive into the morning. Originally, the tunnels were created to extract limestone used in the construction of buildings throughout Paris. Over the centuries, the quarries expanded and became a labyrinth that network of tunnels and chambers that eventually covered over 186 miles beneath the city. However, in the late 1700s, due to an overflow of remains at the Les Innocents graveyard, millions of dead bodies were carted down in wagons, draped in black cloth, and left strewn about the catacombs, creating a chilling underground ossuary. The bones were reorganized into the mausoleum that we know today. The official entrance to the catacombs is located at Place d'Enfer Rochereau, previously called Place d'Enfer or Place of Hell. This is the only legal entrance. The transfer of human remains from Parisian cemeteries to the tunnels began towards the end of the 18th century. When authorities realized that the decomposition of bodies in the city's cemeteries was not particularly good for the public health. Secondary tunnels extend in every direction and disappear into the darkness as you move down the established path. These passageways are closed to the public by iron gates, yet they illustrate just how far this ancient maze stretches beneath the city. In total, the catacombs cover about seven miles, making them one of the largest underground ossuaries in the world. Sometimes the bones are piled in tall heaps along these tunnels, and other times they're stacked into astonishing sculptures. But it's not just the lacquer-based structures that catch your eye. It's the untold number of skulls staring back at you from all sides. They vary wildly. Some skulls are large and eerily clean, while others are tragically small, all stacked atop the other without demarcation. Notable souls lost within the tunnels include Rudder, Francois Rabelais, sculptor Francois Girardin, and painter Simon Vuitt. Fresh victims of the French Revolution were also carried down and dumped into the catacombs, including Georges Danton. Antoine La Vassay and Maximilien de Robespierre. 
After roughly 45 minutes, you exit the maze, ascending a flight of stairs and returning to the land of the living. Though morbid to some, a visit to the catacombs is an eye-opening way to spend your time in Paris, exploring the city of lights from the darkness below. Mysterious, exciting, strange. Tourists describe it as a place like no other. For centuries, the catacombs served as a final resting place for the dead, a place where the bones of millions were piled high. In intricate patterns and macro bay displays, And while the catacombs have long since been closed to the public, their eerie presence still lingers, haunting those who dare to venture too close. But there is more to the catacombs than meets the eye. Rumors persist of secret chambers and hidden treasures, of ghosts that roam the labyrinth tunnels and of darkness that can swallow a person whole. A place of mystery and intrigue, a place that has captivated the imaginations of visitors and Parisians alike for centuries. One of the most famous of these rooms is known as La Playa, named for the sandy floor that leads to a mural of Hokusaya's wave. This is one of the hot spots in the secret catacombs and nearly every weekend you will find people here. It is said that the secret catacombs are home to mass raves and uncontrollable parties and satanic cults. The reality, however, is much softer than that. There is an abundance of paintings, graffiti, sculptures, and communal spaces throughout the underground tunnels. Whispers abound of secretive gatherings taking place within the winding catacomb tunnels. These mysterious events, shrouded in secrecy, are rumored to occur beneath the bustling streets of Paris hidden from the prying eyes of the outside world. The secret catacombs are also rumored to hold dinner parties and cinemas, art events, and even underground swimming pools. In 2004, a small police force, known as the Cataplex, discovered what appeared to be a fully equipped movie theater and bar. Later, when the police returned, the room had been stripped of all electrical equipment, and all that was left was a note that read, Do not try to find us. There is another room that resembles that of a large dining hall, with a table and chairs carved out of limestone rock. There have been known to be underground dinner parties that take place here. All of these events are done by different communities of cataphiles, which are urban explorers who illegally tour the mines of Paris dedicated to the idea of creating art and space outside the eyes of the law. Today, the catacombs are a popular tourist attraction, with visitors able to tour a small portion of the underground tunnels. And view the carefully arranged bones and skulls of the deceased. 
However, the majority of the catacombs remain off limits to the public due to the safety concerns. They came to be known as the catacombs in reference to the underground necropolis in Rome. Although in Paris they were ossuaries rather than places of burial, the Paris catacombs were opened to the public on July 1st of 1809 with great fanfare, creating a stir among the elite who visited. These included such contemporary luminaries as Napoleon III and the Emperor of Austria. There's no question, this is one of the more unusual places to see in Paris. The bones were arranged in intricate patterns and designs, creating a macrobe and airy space that has captivated visitors ever since. Over the years, the catacombs have become a symbol of Parisian culture and history, as well as a fascinating and sometimes eerie tourist attraction. One of the contemporary relevance of the Paris catacombs is their historical significance. The catacombs are a tangible reminder of the past and provide insight into the social, cultural, and political context of the 18th century Paris. They also serve as a somber reminder of the human cost of urbanization and the importance of responsible urban planning. In addition, the catacombs have continued to capture the public imagination through popular culture, including literature, film, and television. They have been featured in works such as Victor Hugo's Less Miserables and the movie As Above, So Below and the television series, Penny Dreadful. This continued interest in the catacombs highlights their enduring cultural significance. The catacombs also serve as an important site for scientific research and discovery. The underground environment provides unique opportunities for study in geology and hydrology and other fields of science. The catacombs have also been used as a repository for historical artifacts and documents, providing valuable insight into the past. Overall, the Paris catacombs remain a relevant and important cultural landmark. The Paris catacombs have been the subject of various legends and myths throughout history. One of the most famous legends surrounding the catacombs is that of the lost man. According to the story, a man wandered into the catacombs and became hopelessly lost, eventually dying of starvation or dehydration. Some versions of the myth suggest that the man's ghost still haunts the catacombs, leading visitors astray. Another popular myth about the catacombs is that they were once used by secret societies for their meetings and rituals. This legend is fueled by the fact that the catacombs contain numerous hidden chambers and passages, as well as by the mysterious graffiti that can be found on the walls. According to some legends, the Philosopher's Stone a mythical substance said to be capable of turning base metals into gold and granting immortality is hidden somewhere in the catacombs. 
This legend is likely inspired by the fact that alchemy was once a popular pursuit in Paris, and that many alchemists believed that the Philosopher's Stone could be found underground. Some people believe that the catacombs are a gateway to hell, and that demons and other supernatural creatures lurk within their depths. This myth is likely fueled by the eerie atmosphere of the catacombs, as well as their association with death and the afterlife. It's worth noting that while these legends might be entertaining, they are largely unfounded. The catacombs are a fascinating and historically significant site. But they are also a dangerous and restricted area that should only be visited with the proper permits and guidance. The underground tunnels and chambers of the catacombs are supported by massive pillars of limestone, creating a maze-like network of corridors and halls. The walls and ceilings of the tunnels are lined with the same limestone, providing a uniform and durable surface. The catacombs themselves are divided into several different sections, each with its own unique features and design elements. The ossuary, or bone repository, is the most famous section of the catacombs. Featuring the macrobe displays of bones that have become synonymous with the site. Other sections of the catacombs include the crypt of the sepulchral lamp, which features an underground chapel with a single lamp that has been burning continuously since the 19th century. In the Aqueduct de Lucis, a section of the catacombs that was once used as an underground water system. The catacombs also feature a variety of ventilation shafts, wells, and other construction elements that were used to support the underground network. Overall, the architectural construct of the Paris catacombs is a testament to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the builders who created this vast and complex underground world. The catacombs began as a series of underground quarries that were used to mine the limestone that was used to build many of Paris's most famous buildings. These quarries were first established in the 13th century and continued to be used for centuries. As Paris grew, the quarries became a problem. The tunnels and chambers were unstable and could collapse at any moment, endangering the people and buildings above. In the late 18th century, the French government made the decision to reinforce the quarries and transform them into a public works project. The bones were arranged in decorative patterns such as walls and skulls and femurs. And the catacombs were open to the public as a tourist attraction in the early 19th century. Today, the catacombs are one of the most popular tourist attractions in Paris, visited by millions of people each year. The Paris Catacombs, the eternal resting place of millions, holds within its dark depths a plethora of paranormal legends and bone-chilling tells that are sure to send shivers down your spine. This macro bay tourist attraction 
of lines of visitors sneaking around the block. It's said to be haunted by the ghost of the deceased, who have been disturbed from their slumber. Dare to explore the catacombs, and you may encounter the spirits of those who rest within. Thank you all for watching the Paris Catacombs. Join me soon for more from Tales Told in the Dark.